running. I'm from Egan, Minnesota. And I'm 16 years old and I go to Bethlehem Lutheran Church. My name is Ben Harp. I'm 18 years old. I'm Courtney Guybert. I'm from Beaver Creek, Ohio. My name is Katherine Ritzy and I am 18 years old. My name is Kirsten Peterson and I am 17 years old. My name is Vinny. I'm 15 years old and I came from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Rachel Gibson and I'm 16 years old and I go to Peace Lutheran Church in Beaver Creek, Ohio. This is what, 37,000? Yeah, 37,000 people look like walking to the Superdome. We're in a crowd. We're still in the crowd. You want a hug? Oh yeah. What do you guys think? Purple Crush or Leopard? You just had your palm read. What did you think of the experience? A little, like, creepy. <laughs> I might not be psychic, but I can see her future. She's going to sit out there all day long and say a lot of generalizations about people. We're mm. giving out our numbers on clothespin. I'm hoping and praying for a transformational experience. I wanna, uh, I wanna be a a more service-driven kid. If I can make one person's day, then I know that coming to New Orleans would be worth it. I really think this is going to be a good trip and that we're going to get a lot done. I thought New Orleans would be like this little, it would all be like French Quarter, I guess I would say. Instead, we pull up to our hotel. It was just like this massive city with like skyscrapers everywhere. Everything looked like it was up to date. Everything looked like it was, I mean, fine. What I didn't know is that the outskirts got affected most by the hurricane. I was worried about the devastation and how I would be able to handle that. You know, you saw the stairs going up, or the house is just gone, there's nothing there. Going through the streets, it was there was no one there, so the feeling was just loneliness very barren. This is real, like, this isn't just television. I mean, I can see the houses and how they're decayed, but I had no idea how it was trying to pack your most precious belongings in one suitcase. Nervous I won't do enough, because, like, I know it's not a mission trip, but it seems like it should be. We were talking with a lady who was here during the storm and she was talking about just all sorts of stuff you just can't even imagine. But then as she was leaving, she was on her cell phone talking to her friend and she said there are tourists here. And that just absolutely broke my heart because I went away knowing that that can never happen again. I wanted to come down here ever since the devastation happened, you know, and I never found a way. And I'd, 15 year old kid, what am I gonna do, you know? And now that we came down here, now I'm, I'm excited. This will be by far the biggest service thing I've done, you know, coming down here, you know, meeting with 30,000 other Lutherans that wanna serve, you know. I think I really wanna take out is just learning how to put service into something. For our service day, we were working at a camp for um, girls at risk. We painted houses, we, um, we pulled weeds. It did feel like service, but it was not at all what I expected, because when you come to New Orleans, you know, you're thinking, you know, let's build houses, they're all destroyed, and we come here and, you know, nothing's destroyed, it just needed renovations. Painting a house was a big deal to them because that's their home and just showing that love and, and support I think really did affect them. And so that's service to me. It might have not been in the Ninth Ward, 
but I think those girls are just as important and just as deserving to have that service and to be shown that encouragement. We just have to remember that there are people here, not necessarily like broken houses and homes. I'd like to say that I'd, I've been, you know, I've changed my life, I've changed my ways, I'm going, but I, I don't know, it's difficult. This is my second gathering and I've also been on two mission trips and when I come, I get like so energized and, and just excited and I always talk about how we need to, you know, devoting a week of your summer is absolutely like fantastic and I think everybody should experience that but you need to kind of treat every day like a mission trip and you need to find that person in your everyday life that you can help. And then I turn into a hypocrite because it doesn't happen and you forget about that until the next summer when it comes. And so I just think it, it, can't, it can't fall. I hope I, I, I hope I still stay like, like I am right now, how I feel right now, um, inspired, hopeful. I hope I don't forget what it feels like to walk through a place that's been so destroyed and so hurt. To see those people's faces who still need help and they're so forgotten. It's changed me. It's made me open my eyes to more than just Beaver Creek, to more than just Ohio. God sent me to come to New Orleans to give out my kind heart for Minnesota. I'm 15 and I have no idea what the rest of my life is going to be like. But one thing about this weekend, I really want to um, try and get into more service. These feelings can't stop here for me, I feel like. I can't just like have this experience and just be like, that's great, you know. I had fun, but it's time to come home now. Like for me, it's just like, this is only the beginning. No matter what the struggle, no matter what the challenge, I felt 37,000 people around me loving the same God having that same passion, you know, going through some similar struggles, and that we're all gonna go through this together. And God definitely called on each and one of us. You know, he called into all of us to come here. Even if it's not the 37,000 people, it's that awesome God that we have, so we just need to remember that. I need to remember that, no matter what. I wanted to come here and listen to the stories and just get to know people, but I think I also have to go home and get to know people better too. I think, I think it's not just New Orleans, it's everywhere. We all have to take care of each other and listen to each other.